Hey guys, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch, and today I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what's been happening, and especially what's been happening out in the garden. I'm happy to report that it is August 28th today, and we haven't had a frost yet. Yay! We usually get a bit of a light frost by the end of August, and this year, instead of the temperatures cooling, it's actually been a lot warmer than it has been throughout the summer. We've been having these glorious days, and I'll show you in a minute, blue, blue sky, warm temperatures, and that is really good for my garden because the season has been relatively cool. We've been getting a lot of rain, a lot of overcast, and a lot of cool night temperatures, which has stunted the growth of some of my squash. But with all this sun, I've noticed things have been catching up, which is so exciting. Today is actually going to be more about the harvesting out of the garden than the rather than the, just the simple pleasure of enjoying all of the beauty of it. So I'm gonna be harvesting potatoes today, rutabagas, beets, and whatever else is ready. So basically our growing zone, I think it's a three, a three or a four, somewhere in that range. It's changed over the last 10 years so I'm not really sure but we do get temperatures down to negative 30 in the winter for extended periods of time we also can't plant out usually until the May long weekend and sometimes we'll still get frost into June and then by the end of August we can plan to have most of the plants that are sensitive to cold out of the garden we can still have um, our cabbages our root vegetables and our kales out in the garden after that first frost but generally speaking most of the garden is harvested for sure by mid September before we head out into the garden I just want wanted to send a huge shout out to my good friend Lorella. Lorella has a homesteading channel. I'm going to link that down below and I would love it if you could click on that link at the end of this video and head over to her channel and subscribe to her channel. Not only is Lorella a really authentic human being, but she's also one of the kindest people that I've ever met. If you guys enjoy my content, I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy hers as well. One of the videos that she has coming up, and I've been able to see a few clips of it, is coming out on Saturday and it's going to be a premiere video. One of the things that's cool about premiere videos is that you can interact through the chat section with the creator as the video is going which I think is really cool but one of the coolest things about this particular video that's coming out and I've been able to see some clips of it so I know that it's awesome is Lorella is an American Sign Language interpreter and she invited a couple of kids to come over to her house to do a little tour they'd never experienced farm life before and these kids happen to be deaf so these kids are signing throughout the entire video. And the thing that I love about this so, so much is the fact that you're able to see these children that have different abilities than maybe you have or your children have just be children. And I think in our society, we can be really uncomfortable with people that have differences. And as a mom with kids with different abilities, with kids with some pretty significant special needs, I really appreciate it when I see people who are able to not just overlook different abilities, but actually celebrate them and appreciate them. Because I think that's one of the things that we do in our society that's a little bit weird, is we try to make everybody the same. And we try to make children or human beings that have different abilities or have special needs, we try to like overlook it or pretend it's not there instead of actually celebrating it and appreciating it. And that's what I loved so much about this video that Lorella did because these kids are just kids. They just happen to sign. I really wanted to support Lorella. She is just a wonderful person. I think what she's doing with this video is really important. So if you could do me a favor and head over there, subscribe to her channel, tell her that I sent you, and then make sure that you hit the bell notification when you go over so that you can be notified when that video is gonna be premiering, the one that I was just talking about. On that note, we're gonna head out into the garden and start doing this massive harvest. We're kind of hitting that time of year where it's just pedal to the metal. I've canned over 300 pounds of tomatoes in the last couple of days. I made eight quarts of strawberry rhubarb jam and a whole bunch of cowboy candy, and it's been just crazy. But I love this time of year because my pantry is starting to look a little bit scary. There's not a lot of food in there, and now I'm able to really fill it up. So I'm excited to get out in the garden and see what we're able to harvest today. I'm super happy with the way that this forest garden turned out. If I can find a couple of clips to show before and after, I'll put those in here. But this forest garden has produced for me so much better than I thought it was going to for its first year. A lot of the perennials that I planted in the spring didn't produce super well for me, but I didn't expect that. It's going to take a few years before things like the elderberries and the gooseberries and the apples and the cherries and all of those plants are producing. But all of the other plants that I put in here to act as ground cover produced for me prolifically. So I'm really excited about that. Let me show you the size of this pumpkin. 
This pumpkin is, I think, the biggest pumpkin that I've ever grown, for sure. We don't normally get really huge pumpkins, but I planted a couple of Dills Atlantics. Um, those are those really giant pumpkins for the kids, for jack-o'-lanterns, and I'm happy to say I think there's four or five really good-sized pumpkins over there. This area back in behind me here, this gorgeous plant up here is comfrey. This is the first time that I've ever grown comfrey and it is now one of my favorite plants. One of the things that's really cool about comfrey, and I've just been learning about this kind of stuff, so you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong for those of you that know more about permaculture than me. This is a plant that is a biodynamic accumulator. And apparently what this means is that because it has a really deep root that can get down and get nutrients from far below where most of the plants can get, and it brings them up into the leaves. And then when the leaves die back and you cut them down and use them as a mulch, those nutrients can get into areas where some of the other plants can more readily access them. One of the other things that they do is they absorb nitrogen from the air into their leaves and then also release that nitrogen down. Same thing when you cut them down in the fall and then use them for a mulch. One of the things I'm super excited about this year is I've started doing a lot of seed saving. So all of these beautiful flowers that you can see here, I've started to collect seed from and I plan I know a lot of these will probably self-seed, but I wanna make sure that next year I can plant a lot of these same flowers because the bees love them. I've left a lot of my giant sunflowers for the birds and you can see they've eaten most of the seeds out of this one already. I have tons and tons of squash that are growing all throughout here, but mostly I have to be honest, what I love about this space is the amount of beautiful flowers that are growing here and then the amount of pollinators that these flowers are attracting. Let me show you. Can you see all of the bumblebees that are in here? There's hundreds of them. The bumblebees seem to love these little blue flowers here. My honeybees tend to like these poppies more, but I don't see any honeybees in here right now. I have to go see if I can find some. Aha, there's one. Little honeybee. They really love the poppies. This one is a Californian poppy, this one here. Can you see all the pollen on her legs there? I seriously could not be happier with the way that this space has grown. So now I need to go find a pitchfork, this smooth pitchfork that works really well, but I don't know where it went. One of the things that I'm really sad about as far as the squash goes, they've all decided to start producing prolifically but I just don't think there's any way that these are gonna mature fast enough. But fortunately, this is one of the only squash that this has happened with. Get this crazy potato. There's several like this, so I'm not sure what exactly is going on. Does anyone know what causes this weird looking? We planted potatoes exactly like this. Yeah, these kind? Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but either way, they'll taste just fine. <laughs> I'm really happy because there's only a couple of them that are scabby. You see that, how oh, this kind of has scabs all over it. And most of them are nice and smooth like this. Oh, we're digging vein. Into another plant. Harvest here. Like. And we didn't spend like any money on potatoes either. No. We bought a couple bags. One of my guys just bought me, brought me a little raspberry smoothie. Yeah so good so sweet so if I have raspberry seeds in my teeth please forgive me um, what's really awesome about this little potato harvest so we just pulled out a couple of plants I think that Kate said there was four or five plants and a couple of them were really small and we got this big box of really nice looking tomato or not tomatoes potatoes out of it and this makes me really happy because we ran out of space to really plant a lot of potatoes and we also what was it? We just couldn't get to the seed store or something? We anyway. Save space. Yeah. Anyways, um, we also ended up using some of our own seed potatoes to grow potatoes. And that's something, yeah, lots of them. And that's something that we've never done before. So the fact that we're getting any potatoes at all and the fact they're looking this good and the fact that they don't have any scab or any diseases on them is just awesome. So I'm really grateful for this. We're gonna stick with just this one box because this will do us for the next couple of days anyway. And then we'll get out here and do the larger harvest on the rest of the potatoes probably in a couple of weeks. Um, right now we're gonna head up and do the rutabagas though because the rutabagas and the beets, they really need to come out because they're starting to split and the mice are starting to get at them. On my way up to the rutabaga and the beet patch, I passed by 
my little cabbage patch here. And I noticed that I noticed that I have a cabbage that's splitting and the other one beside it that's starting to split. So we're just gonna quickly pull out this, these cabbages and get them prepared and put them in the root cellar and I'll show you how I do that. We've done a lot of experimenting around storing cabbage and this is probably the best way at least that we have found to be able to store cabbage for a long period of time in a root cellar. So this is how I do it. I peel back all the extra leaves here. This has split a little bit in under here, so I'll probably end up using this one right away, but it'll still work for the example of how we end up storing them, is I leave the root ball on and I store it just like this in the root cellar, just lying on a pallet. At about six months, they were pretty much done. They weren't something that I would like make a coleslaw with or something like that, but if you had to eat them, you could eat them. So this is how I store my cabbage. One of the things that I've kind of struggled with making over the last couple of years, just years, just making it so it tastes good, is sauerkraut. And I finally figured out how to do it in a way that we really love it in our house. So all I did was I took one head of cabbage like this and I ran it through the food processor, chopped it into small little pieces. It was about, I think it was about one and maybe one and a half cabbages for a big gallon jar. And I used a couple of tablespoons of pickling salt in there, mixed it all together really well the way that you're supposed to. And then I added about six big cloves of garlic. And that was the secret ingredient, my friends. It was delicious, so, so, so good. I even ate it on Smokies the other night and I thought I had died and gone to heaven. And I am not a huge fan of sauerkraut. In fact, I hadn't even tried it up until three or four years ago and I wasn't a huge fan. I knew it was good for me, so I ate it for that reason. But this garlic sauerkraut is so good. Okay, I ended up with a couple of smaller ones that I think I can leave for a little bit longer. I didn't harvest until the end of September last year, but I think with all the rain that we've been having and now these warm temperatures, that everything's just developing really quickly. I did end up losing three to cracking and splitting. You can still eat them like that um, if you bring them inside and cut off those chunks, but because I have such a surplus of cabbage, I'm not gonna worry about it and I'm just gonna give it to the chickens. So we're gonna get these run down to the root cellar and then we will head over and get the rest of the stuff harvested. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys about this other cool thing that I'm gonna be doing today. I'm implementing a suggestion that one of you made on, I think it was one of my root cellar videos from last year. Somebody told me that their grandfather used to spread mint all over the floor of their root cellar because mice hate mint. And I used that trick with um, cotton ball soaked with peppermint oil in my pantry in the house, but I didn't think about it for the root cellar outside. And I, I did end up with a cabbage that had a hole chewed right through it. And also a couple of, um, uh, what was it, beets that ended up with some chew marks on them. So I have a surplus of peppermint growing in my garden. So I'm gonna go pick a whole bunch of it and lay it all over the ground in here. And one of the other things that I did was planted some peppermint plants around the outside of the root cellar here. So I'm gonna run and grab that peppermint and spread it here while Kate goes to grab the wheelbarrow and gets the um, cabbages and we'll get those put in here. I really hope this works. If nothing else, it will make it smell nice. So this is how we store them, laying on a pallet. Then I took peppermint and I put it all the way around the outside of it. And then I put a few in between these bins as well. I'm gonna go pick a bunch more. Why not? I have lots of it. And if this trick works, it's pretty awesome. So this is where I grew my peas on trellises, but I've taken all those trellises down and removed all the pea vines. And I had, um, turnips on this side we've already harvested all those so now we have the rutabagas here and the beets here and they all really need to be pulled up normally I don't do these until into September as well but again I think with all the rain everything just matured more quickly and I'm actually ending up with some bolting happening on some of these when a plant starts to bolt like this 
uh, this is like seed production. So the plant starts to put a lot of energy into producing the seeds up here instead of producing the root down below. So the root growth completely stops and also a lot of the sweetness leaves the plant as well. So you really want to try to pull up your beets or any of your root vegetables before they start bolting like this. So that is what we're going to do today. This kind of looks like a disease on them. There is I'm some? putting them. Yeah, they're like really bumpy. Oh. On the bigger ones. Um, one of the, I did get several comments on my last video where I was showing us putting, I think it was turnips in the root cellar. Okay. Um, a lot of people were saying that, that you can eat all of the tops. And yes, we do know that we eat the tops usually in the springtime when they're nice and tender. But because we have so many um, greens in our garden, I planted a ton of kale and Swiss chard and um, collards, that those are the greens that we're using this time of year. The rest of these will all go either into the compost to make soil for next year's garden or um, to the chickens. When we had pigs, that's one really lovely thing about pigs is that they will eat a huge pile like this in no time, but we don't have pigs now. So it will likely get divided up between the chickens and the compost pile. But I just wanted to show you the difference in sizes that I'm dealing with. So little tiny itty bitty ones like this and then nice sized roots like this. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. You know what's funny is that in my last video I had a really large spider. It, fortunately I zoomed in on it and it was just a dandy long leg spider but it was a huge spider that was sitting on my shoulder and I didn't notice it at the time during the video but I also didn't notice it during editing. <laughs> so it wasn't until somebody pointed it out that I went and checked and so I apologize for that because I know that grossed out a couple of people. Um, and I actually am one of those people that had I known if that spider, that that spider was on me, I would have screamed and ran and looked like a crazy person because I do not like spiders. I love spiders for where, you know, where they fit into the ecosystem and all of that and their job and the role they play, but I do not like them on me. So hopefully I'm not going to have another spider now. I have the creepy crawl. He's just talking about it. <laughs> not going to have another spider on me. This time. I think that's weird that somebody feel like that. Okay, so I have all of the smaller beets all ready to come in the house, and the rest of them are heading down to the root cellar. So please don't forget to head over to Lorella's channel. The link is down in the description box below. And go over and subscribe to her channel, and don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you can get notified when that video is coming out on her channel. And it should be tomorrow at some point that it'll be coming out. All right, my friends, I am gonna go get all of this stuff done. I don't know how many of these beets I'm going to get processed today, but definitely within the next couple of days. I think I'm just gonna wheel this wheelbarrow right into the root cellar and leave it there so that they can stay cool and crisp until I'm ready to get to them. Before I go, I will just take you around and show you some of the wonderful things that are growing in the garden at this time of year. And hopefully that can be an encouragement to any of you who are living in a northern um, climate or are considering moving to a northern climate that you can grow so many things. It just takes a little bit of practice to get to the point where you can have a really abundant harvest coming out of a northern garden. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys!